Hello, welcome to my top 20 completed manga list. Now, I know it's been a while since I did my top 10 ongoing manga list, but the reason for that was I kept putting this off because I kept reading new series and completing new series, and I just came to the realization that it's inevitable that my list is going to change and grow and evolve. So this is my top 20 as of now, November 2021, and in the future I may make an updated version of this, etc. as I read more series, because there is so many manga series out there. I have completed about 300 manga series throughout my lifetime. So this 20 is kind of curated. I would recommend almost all these series, and if I don't, I will talk about why. So yes, I'm going to be giving a little summary of each of these. Hopefully you can find some new recommendations and kind of see a better look at my tastes or judge me for my tastes. I don't know what you're going to do with this information, but yeah, this is going to be in no particular order other than kind of like the top three or four, I would say, are very solidified near the top, but the rest of these are interchangeable. I don't have a very strict ranking of my top 20, etc. So yeah, most of these series you have probably heard me talk about before in a plethora of my videos, but some of these I don't think I have talked about, so that's going to be a little bit exciting, but yeah. Let's just grab a random one from the stack and start because I have them piled all around me in the background that you can't see. But I guess let's start with Bokura no Rs. Now this is the very first manga series I ever completed actually. Read start to finish, I did read it scanned because these volumes are pretty hard to get your hands on, especially volume 3 it does not exist. But basically this series is a typical death game mecha series about a group of children who are roped into this game where they have to pilot this mech to save the world and after they do that they are going to die. So this is a very sad series, very emotional. You get attached to these children and their stories. A majority of them have very troubled home life and if I'm remembering correctly I would trigger this for a plethora of things such as like sexual abuse, mistreatment of children, etc etc. But I think this was a really powerful series and I am itching to read it again because like I said, I had completed this in maybe like 2013, so it's been almost 10 years since I've read this. But the fact that it has stuck in my brain for this long shows how impactful and great of a series it is. I know there is an anime, but I have not watched it and I heard that they changed the ending of it. So definitely go with the manga if you can get your hands on it or read the scans or whatever you want. Highly recommend if you were able to stomach, like I said, some graphic stuff involving children and just sad vibes in general, but very good. So I'm going to try to alternate the genres a little bit, but next we'll talk about my love story. So this is a shoujo romance story, but it is my favorite kind of shoujo where the characters do not take themselves too seriously. There's a lot of comedy involved. It's just all around a good time. Basically the plot is there is this guy who's kind of muscular big not traditionally handsome and he saves this girl from being molested on the train and she instantly falls in love with him and it's their story of getting together and their romance and it is so wholesome so cute and the gag is kind of that the male lead's best friend suna is kind of like the typical male shoujo protagonist and her friends are super confused why she's in love with this guy but then of course they all get to know his personality and see what a great guy he is but yeah this is a very fun very cute very fluffy shoujo romance, and I love it. And there's also something by this author later in the list that is kind of the same genre. I love my really funny clown shoujo romances. I don't like anything too serious with my romance stuff. So next let's hop into Shonen. This is Assassination Classroom. This is also one of the earlier series that I read in my manga reading career, but another one that still sticks with me that I really want to reread soon. It is about a classroom and they get this alien teacher all of a sudden who says he's gonna destroy the world and these kids have to defeat him before that time comes. So the series goes on and they're basically training to assassinate their teacher but the cast is very lovable, you grow connected to them and the teacher so it's all around a fun also comedy but also action. There are some serious moments and I highly recommend for any shonen fan pretty much might not be your typical shonen, but I highly enjoyed it. I highly recommend. And the ending is a little bittersweet for this one. Be prepared to cry, get some tissues. But that being said, I highly recommend this. 
If you're looking for more of a slice of life series, let's talk about Genshiken. So this is a series that I had loved the anime for for so long and I finally got around to reading the manga recently. So yes, this first nine volumes is Genshiken season one and then there's season two which follows a group of other characters including some of the old characters but this series is about a group of otakus in college in their kind of otaku club. They're all interested in video games, cosplay, anime, manga, etc. And this is just a slice of life story following their daily lives. The humor is pretty raunchy, kind of toilet humor-esque, so if you don't like that you won't like this, but I thought it was very endearing. You love all the characters. You'll probably be able to tell by this list I am really into character-driven stories, so if there's a good cast, I will most likely like it. So yes, Genshiken, a really nice slice of life featuring older characters so they can get away with being a little more darker or sexual in their jokes, etc. So I really enjoyed this. Very relatable in some aspects, more so than if it, this was about maybe like an anime club in high school or middle school. And then I would also maybe classify this as a slice of life story, but much different in tone from Genshiken. Paradise Kiss is about a girl who is in high school, she's about to graduate, and she's got a lot of pressure on her to get into college, get top grades, but it's not really what she wants to do. And one day she gets scouted by a group of fashion students at a different high school and they scout her to be their model or their muse. And at first she is so reluctant, she does not understand what they're asking her. But as time goes on, she gets swept into their world and there is a romance with one of the other students. And there's lots of drama, typical of Ayazawa, who is also the author of Nana. But yeah, I really enjoyed this. I would say this is also for more of a mature audience. There is some explicit sexual scenes and some talks of like weight loss and stuff like that because it is about the fashion industry. But overall, really great. Short series, only five volumes. You can get it in this all-in-one edition. And I had a really good time rereading this recently. I did reread a lot of these to prepare for this video so it would be more fresh in my mind. And this was one of them and I had a really great time with this. The ending's a little controversial, but I love it. I think it wraps it up really nicely, so this is a very satisfying little short series. Going back to comedy, Arca Under the Bridge, I talked about this a lot in the early days of my channel when I was reading it, and now that I've finished it, I still love it just as much. It is a comedy series about a man who falls off a bridge and gets saved by this girl, and he wants to pay her back in any way that he can because his thing is that he doesn't want to owe debts to anyone in life. And she decides that she wants to experience love, so they start dating and that's how he is repaying his debt. And he ends up moving in with her under this bridge where she lives because she is homeless. And a lot of the other characters that they meet on the bridge are also homeless. But even though that is a very serious topic, this manga puts a spin on it to be very comedic. There is serious moments and romantic moments, but it is mostly about the comedy. And the eccentric cast of characters. Can we see the theme here? Lots of characters, lots of lovable characters. And the ending for this one is also very satisfying to me. I cried tears of happiness. I was so happy for this ending and I love it. It's my type of humor. I hesitate to recommend comedy manga because not everyone has the same taste in comedy, but this is exactly my comedy. Stupid, absurd, funny situations, funny characters, funny everything. I just love the series and I highly recommend. As we all know, I talk about this a lot, but yeah, Arca Under the Bridge. Next, let's go back to Shonen. Let's talk about Bakuman. Now, Bakuman is a series that I love. I love the anime. I love the manga. It is a manga about creating manga. It's about these two kids who start in middle school and one does the art, one does the story, and it's their journey to becoming mangakas in Shonen Jump. And this gives an insight into how Shonen Jump works, the cutthroat environment, the long hours, the competition in the magazine, etc. I do recognize that the series does have some issues such as the poor writing of female characters, which is kind of a theme in this duo's work such as Death Note, etc. But I really enjoy Bakuman. I love the characters. I love the series. Very interesting. Very wordy. If you are not a reading person, this will not be for you but I think it's worth it. You can get this in the box set. Really nice work, really nice art, and I highly enjoyed it. And I would definitely classify at least the anime as one of my favorite anime, but the manga is also very, very good. And it feels like you're really getting your bang for your buck because sometimes these volumes take like three hours to read with how much words are in it. And it's the same price as a normal volume that might take like 30 minutes to read. So yeah, pro tip, <laughs> bang for your buck with Bakuman. 
Okay, so this is the most recent thing I've read on this list. I actually read this yesterday, all in one sitting. This is Sunny by Taya Matsumoto, a master of manga, and this series is about a group of kids who live in a foster home slash group home slash orphanage. They're all in different situations at this home, but at this home there is a car called Sunny where the kids go to kind of escape the world. They play in this car and let their imagination run free to places when they're not in this group home or they're with their parents, etc. And it is a very interesting, bittersweet, sad in tone look at these kids' lives and the effects of being abandoned by their parents in some cases or the death of their parents or sick parents. And after doing some research into this, I did find that Taya Matsumoto did live in a group home for some of his life. So if this is based on personal experience, that makes it even more profound. But if not, I still think this is a really nice work. Didn't make me cry, but like it really made you feel for these characters. And I don't think I've read anything else like this really. I know like The Promised Neverland has to do with an orphanage, I think. But I don't think this is similar to that at all. And I highly recommend this easily into my top 20 after reading it yesterday. I'm gonna be thinking about this for a long time and I hope to reread it many times in the future. And then speaking of Taya Matsumoto, let's talk about Ping Pong. So this is another shorter series, five volumes from him, about Ping Pong as the title implies. It's about two friends who are doing Ping Pong and one is very into the game. He's very emotional, he's very outgoing, he's like a really good athlete, while the other friend is very good at the game technically, but he has no passion, no spirit for the game, and it's just their journey through high school, their relationship with ping pong, their relationship with sports, not totally about ping pong the sport, but more about the effects that it has on their lives, etc. And they meet other characters with different connections to the game, and it's just really interesting, really good, made me cry. I do think the anime is better for this one, but the manga is still superb. Highly recommend for any sports fan or any fan of kind of like psychological drama type thing. These editions are really nice from Viz. Highly recommend. Even though his art might put off a few people, I think it's really beautiful. I love this art style, especially in Sunny, which is a more recent work of his. It's very refined. I love it. So don't let it scare you. If you think it's weird at first, you get used to it slash you start to appreciate it if you haven't already. But yeah, Ping Pong, highly recommend. Love it. One of my top favorite sports series. And then speaking of another sports series, we got Haikyuu. We gotta talk about Haikyuu. My channel's named after a character in Haikyuu. I think it's kind of obvious that I love Haikyuu. A very long-running sports series about volleyball. It's about Hinata Shoyo, who is a very short kid and he sees on TV another short athlete at the high school nationals from the school Karasuno. So he decides to go there and is inspired by this player that he can do anything even though he's short. So that's how his journey starts and he goes through high school. Their team is very much the underdog team. They're underestimated, they have to beat the odds, etc, etc. Lots of character growth, development. There is some comedy elements, sports elements, action, etc. But the key highlight is the character development in my opinion. This series runs for 45 volumes, so it is quite long, but it is worth it. And you can read this on the Shona Jump app if you don't want to invest in the volumes. I've talked more about this in my video, Why I Love High Q, I think that's what it's titled. So if you want a more in-depth look at that. But yeah, highly recommend High Q. Not much more to say about it. Very popular in the sports manga community, but also just if you like shonen manga in general, you'll probably like this as well. Now, okay, let's talk about Wandering Sun. This is the manga that I had said for a very long time was my top favorite manga, but I have not read this in a long, long time. I think I completed this in like 2014 or 15, and I just recently was able to get all the volumes physically that do not complete the translation, so you have to finish this series scanned anyway. But since this manga covers such a sensitive topic, I think I need to reread it to solidify it as my top manga again. With just how much I've learned about myself and about the LGBT plus community, I'm not sure how well this represents, specifically the transgender community. So like I said, I would have to read this again before really being able to recommend this, but the story is about this kid, I think it starts in elementary or middle school, who is struggling with their gender. And they also meet this other kid who is going through the same thing. And it is a slice of life story 
coming of age, coming to term with gender and sexuality, and The Art is Beautiful. I love this author's work, even though some of their other works have been a little bit controversial. If you know, they did Even Though We're Adults and Sweet Blue Flowers, but like I said, this art is gorgeous. I really love how they do their line work, and I am kind of guilty of that. Sometimes I forgive some sloppy writing, etc. if the art is really good, but yeah. So, like I said in the beginning of this video, I wouldn't recommend necessarily all these series, and this is one that I would recommend with caution. And I wanted to put this kind of in my honorable mentions category, but I decided to keep it here because at one point in my life, this was my top, top manga series, and it might still be once I read it again. I feel like you're allowed to change your opinions as you grow and change. There's many series that I used to love and I reread them and I was like, what the heck is this? Why did I like this? And I'm afraid that that might be the case with this one. But it might not be, so I will update once I reread this in one of my reading logs, etc. Once I feel up to it, but I think I'll still like this, depending on the representation, etc. Because I've become a lot more sensitive to that as time has passed. And then on the lighter note, let's talk about Spirit Circle. So this is another recent read. It's a short series, and it is a story about a boy and reincarnation. That's all I will say for now. I don't want to spoil anything, but basically this is a action fantasy series which is the only one of that genre on this list because as you can tell it's not a genre I typically read but this story is very good it wrapped up nicely there's some romance there's some action there's some comedy a really cool look in the reincarnation themes and genre and I highly recommend this if you can get your hands on it I know it's kind of hard to get right now but you can read it on the Crunchyroll manga app as well now this one I had to include on this list considered kind of a masterwork, 20th Century Boys. Now this is a mystery series by Naoki Urasawa, and this series is about, in the most vague terms, so I don't spoil anything, this series is about a cult and childhood fantasies coming true later in life. And this is just an epic tale, epic mystery, does struggle in some aspects with a very large cast, and I think the middle half of the series does turn a little bit downhill, kind of like Death Note type vibes, you know, a big event happens in the middle of a story, but still really good. Still in my top 20, obviously. The first work I have read by Naoki Urasawa, really excited to get into Monster, Pluto, etc. When I can get my hands on those volumes. But yeah, 20th Century Boy is definitely a solid choice if you like seinen, mystery, action, a little bit of fantasy, elements, sci-fi type thing. Highly recommend. We're getting into the nitty gritty a little bit, so let me see what I want to start with. Let's go with Kuroko's Basketball. So I do not own the English print of these because I think the editions are really ugly, but that may change in the future, wink wink. But yeah, so Kuroko's Basketball is another sports series, but this one is a little different as it is about basketball, but all these characters have kind of superhuman powers, so it's not super realistic basketball, I understand that. But what really makes it is the characters and the character dynamics. Basically, it is about this guy named Kuroko and he enters high school to play basketball and this team is with people he has not known before. His previous team in middle school was dubbed the Generation of Miracles. They were a very good all-star team, but they ended up splitting ways in high school. So throughout the series, he kind of meets with those former teammates, reconciles their issues, lots of character development, action, sports, love the art. But like I said, if you are a fan of Slam Dunk or the likes, you might not like this because it's not super realistic basketball, but the arcs and the matches keep you on the edge of your seat. I remember reading this weekly as it came out and it was agonizing. That last game, I swear each chapter was like five seconds of the match and it just drug on forever, but it was so exciting, so hype. I normally wouldn't describe something with the word hype, but this was hype and I'm really excited to reread this once I potentially get the English volumes, but you can read this on Shonen Jump as well. And then the only series that I don't own some type of physical for is Hikaru no Go, which I did read on the Shonen Jump app completely slash from the library. So basically this series is about a boy named Hikaru and he stumbles across his grandpa's old Go board one evening, which is a board game in Japan, much like chess or checkers, etc. And this Go board turns out to be possessed by this spirit named Sai, and Sai was the head Go advisor in the past to some emperor, and he really wants to play Go again, so he convinces this little boy, Hikaru, to 
pursue playing Go and eventually he gets really into the game and decides to pursue it and it's about his journey becoming really good at Go and becoming a professional Go player and this series has everything that you would like about a sports series just about a game. It's very lovely, there's rivals, there's action, there's comedy. A little more on the immature side since the character is in elementary school, but it does go through his life and he does get older throughout the series. This is the only one on this list that I think the ending is terrible. So just keep that in mind, if you hate bad endings and think that it has the ability to completely ruin a series, stay away from this. But I think the journey along the way, which sounds cliche and cheesy, makes up for the ending and I highly recommend it if you are a fan of sports or games or shonen in general, like I said. And this is another one like 20th Century Boys that struggles from the midway point being kind of a good stopping point and then the rest gets dragged out, but I really enjoy this. I think anyone who has read this series or watched the anime really highly enjoys it. And it's just a classic game slash sports series that I highly recommend. And you can see the artist of Bakuman's earlier art really good. The character designs are awesome. These characters got drip, they got style. I usually don't use those words either, drip, but really cool, love the art, love the story, love the characters, even though the ending is meh. Now let's talk about High School Debut. As I said, this is by the author of my love story and I love and adore this series. The premise is gonna sound stupid, but it's really good, I promise. It's about this girl who enters high school and she really wants to get a boyfriend, but she's kind of like a tomboy and very herself. And she seeks the help of this really popular guy and he agrees to be her coach in love and along the way they form a relationship and it's like a very cliche theme of not changing yourself for others be yourself etc but it's so good it's hilarious one of the funniest things i've ever read the comedy is in line with my love story so if you liked it you will love this and it's just all around a good time like i said i was busting out laughing I was crying at how cute some of the moments were and I'm not a super emotional person but this was just magnificent. I love it. We stand, we stand this mangaka, we stand this couple. It's great. And then another shoujo manga that I can't decide if I like more than High School Debut because I haven't read this one in a while but Lovely Complex or Love Calm. This is another very funny shoujo manga. The only shoujo manga I really like are the funny ones as we've established. But this one is about a tall girl and a short guy. They're kind of like the comedic duo at school. Kind of rivals, kind of hate each other. But everyone makes fun of them as a couple. Like a comedy duo. But eventually they realize they have feelings for each other and start dating. And this is another wholesome, cute, learning to accept yourself because she is very tall. She's very insecure about that. But the male lead is also very insecure because he's short. But it's kind of funny, I was looking a little bit into this to make this video and I realized that she's only 5'7", which I guess in Japan is super tall, but I'm taller than that and I don't feel like I'm a giraffe, but I live in America, so, you know, <laughs> to each their own, but Otani is pretty sure he's like 5'2 or something like that. But yeah, super funny, super wholesome, love this relationship, on par with High School Debut, I need to reread this soon. But I cannot find volume 15 and 16 for the life of me. I could just read them scanned, whatever. But adore the series, one of my all-time favorites. It'll always have a special place in my heart. Love it. There's also an anime that's very good, even though it is quite old. You, if you don't like old animation, you might not like it, but I highly recommend this. And before we get into the top two, let's talk about a couple honorable mentions. Now, Classmates or Dakuse, this is one of my all-time favorite series, but... I don't like to recommend it. I don't know why, but I feel like insecure about recommending stuff that I'm really, really in love with that might be controversial to some people. I don't know why. I need to let my Dokuse flag fly because I am obsessed with the series. I've been obsessed with the series since the beginning, similar to how I'm obsessed with 19 Days, which I talk about a lot on my Instagram. But Classmates is basically a series about these two boys in high school they have to do a choir performance for their class and this guy is very insecure about his voice and this guy is not. He's very outgoing, very carefree and he ends up giving him singing lessons and their relationship develops from there. There is a creepy ass teacher in this series that likes him which puts a damper on some of the aspects but just if you ignore him this series is amazing. I love the art. I love Asumiko Nakamura. She's one of my favorite manga artists and authors. 
But yeah, the Classmate series is three volumes, and then there's Sora Tahara, which is about the creepy-ass teacher. I hate that volume, I'm not gonna buy it. And then after that is Occupation to Beloved, which is a collection of short stories, which includes some stories about these two. And then after that, the Creme de la Creme is Blanc, which is two volumes solely about these two. And I really hope Seven Seas gets to publish that. I know it's already available in Italian, so fingers crossed that it comes soon here. And then it is also another story after Blanc that is ongoing. So technically this is not completed, but each like segment of the story is completed so far for the most part. But yeah, I really love this. I love the relationship. Classmates and Blanc are definitely the best installments. Occupation to Beloved is okay and I hate Sora Tahara. Basura. Like, get that out of my face. But yeah, as we know, I don't like pedophiles on this channel. So like I said, really good, but I hesitate to recommend. I don't know. Like, I don't want people judging my faves, if you know what I mean. If they're more niche. Like, I want to protect this with all my heart, but I also want it to get exposure so we can get more volumes of it, etc. I'm conflicted with this one, but I love this series. I'm obsessed. I've been obsessed for a long time for this one. And then another honorable mention, let's talk about Rainbow. It's about a group of kids in prison after World War II. So this is a historical seinen that is really, really sad and messed up. I usually don't tend to read stuff that's this messed up and sad, but for some reason I'm really into kind of prison gang delinquent manga, which is why I'm waiting for my copies of Tokyo Revengers to come in. But Rainbow's very good. The reason I put this on the honorable mentions list is because I have not finished this series. The translations on scans are really slow and I just recently started picking them up in Spanish, but Amazon Spain lost my package with the rest of the volume, so I should have them all, but I don't. So I've read about like 75% of the series, so that's why I can confidently put it in my top. But like I said, this is very sad, very potentially triggering. There is instances of child abuse, child prostitution, just general abuse, police brutality, etc. But it's really an important read and an insightful read and I love it. And it'll always have a special place in my heart. There is an anime. You will cry at every friggin' episode, I swear. But it's so good. If you can get your hands on the Spanish editions, I would highly recommend or read the scans or watch the anime or anything. You won't regret it, I swear. And now we're getting into the top two. This is definitely my top two. I love these series. I highly recommend these series. And first, let's start with Kids on the Slope. So Kids on the Slope, this is a manga about jazz. It's in, set in the 60s in Japan. And this is a short, I believe it's Jose drama, romance, music, series, slice of life. Basically everything I like in a manga in one. Since it is short, the story goes fast. There's no slow pacing or anything like that. It's kind of like a love square situation, all centered around jazz. Music fixes everything. Music is the rock that these kids lean on. And it's just an amazing story. I highly love it, highly recommend. Again, like Rainbow, it's only available in Spanish and Japanese, I believe, and also maybe like German and Italian, not English. But the anime for this is fantastic. As is the case with a lot of music series, it does help to listen to the music, but they do say what they're playing in here, so you can just look it up yourself. But I love this series holds a very near and dear place in my heart and it's also like a little historical since it is in the 60s there is some dealings with like racism and military type stuff because one of the characters is mixed race so yeah just troubled home life messy romance messy drama a little bit which is usually not what i like but since it is coupled with music and the setting is so cool i highly enjoy this and i highly recommend this and then lastly, my top favorite completed manga. I don't talk about this a lot, so this might be a little surprising, but A Silent Voice. Yes, I have read this so many times, more than I can count. My copies are beat up. This is the first series I ever collected physically, month by month when it came out. I love it. I adore it. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what A Silent Voice is. You've probably seen the movie, which is also very good, but I think the manga is better. It's basically about these two kids in elementary school. This girl is deaf and he is her bully, which causes her to transfer schools. And then there's a time skip later in life where he is kind of the outcast and the loner because no one wants to hang out with the bully anymore. He's not the cool one. And the series is about his journey to try to gain forgiveness from this girl who he tormented earlier in life. So yeah, it's about forgiveness and there is a lot of discussions of mental health, depression, living with disabilities, bullying. It is superb. I really love this. Peak fiction. 
I think anyone should be able to read this and like it. It's one of the first things I recommend when someone asks me how to get into manga or anime. Like I said, it, there's a movie and then this series is only seven volumes. It's quite short, succinct, very powerful, great message, and I love it. I'll always love this series. So yeah, that is my list. Let me know what you think. I know this has been a long time coming. Let me know your top favorites, if you agree with any of these, if you hate any of these series that I love. But don't be too harsh, especially on Dokusei because I'm sensitive. But <laughs> yeah, I had really fun making this, researching this, rereading some of the series on this list, and hoping to reread some of these series on this list. Like Ask Class, I don't own all of it, and Kuroko's Basketball, and Lovecom. Because of the times we live in, it's kind of hard to get some series right now. So yeah, like I said, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.